Monster Young Game Designers Inspired series. Episode 3, Game Systems, using programming, physics and mechanics to enhance your level design. The game development process is a really big, multidisciplinary, cooperative enterprise. What you're doing is you're trying to come up with an interesting set of game mechanics, come up with a good way of presenting those and try and produce a good experience for people to play and, and experience. If your game was an engine, then the mechanics are the pistons and the cogs and it's all the separate little bits that go to make up the entirety of your game. Get the main mechanic of the character walking around first. Because just the act of playing with that can be so inspirational. It's a real kind of um, catalyst for your imagination, you know. Really just dive in and just start playing with it. When we're designing like a gameplay mechanic or a level, we often go through multiple stages on it. We white box a level, which is where we get very, very simple shapes, generally white boxes. And that's a really good way of testing out the gameplay to see if it's fun. Once we're happy with the white box and we've all sort of agreed, then we can go into the second stage. I'd describe programming in video games as maths meets art. There is something creative and almost artistic about the way you put it together, but it, it's the beauty of math. You feel when you're doing it well, there's a beauty within it. Coding is the, the primary method for being able to inform your game and the game engine what you want it to do. You don't need to know how to code to be able to have an effective job in the games industry. There are many other roles in the games industry that don't necessarily ever touch a line of code. I didn't know a thing about programming when I started, and here I am now working at Unity. So physics in computer games is probably a lot more common now than it used to be. Now, if you were to use a game engine like um, Unity, for example, or something like that, that's got an inbuilt physics system that tries to simulate real-world physics. Things fall under gravity, and they bounce and collide and things. Depending on the physics system, you can get like a very different result every time, because you get a lot of emergent things out of it. You know, you get a lot of unexpected scenarios and things that can be quite fun. Using physics as part of that system helps people to understand how things behave, so you can kind of start to build things in a way that make physical sense. I would uh, define the role of artificial intelligence in video games as providing the player with enough information so that they then subsequently fill in the gaps and believe that characters and entities in the world have their own agency and their own intelligence. Nothing is truly artificially intelligent, not yet. So AI, in a way, will need to be very much tailored to your game. The sort of behaviour that you are using to manipulate hundreds of troops is very different to the kind of extremely sort of character-driven individual AI you might need for something that's very much focused on, on a given character or opponent. Play lots of games play computer games, play board games, play sports, and try to understand what it is about those that is interesting, that is fun, that makes you want to play, and then bring that to your own role as a game developer. Practice those skills and, and try and know what it is you want to do. Our next episode, we'll look at and listen to cinematics and game sound. Until then, for more inspiration or to enter the BAFTA Young Game Designers competition, visit ygd.bafta.org.